COVID-19 and alphas. Uh, here we are again from Love Air. Um, very privileged to spend time with three wonderful people, outstanding people who are excellent communicators, each one in their own right. And we're coinciding with Alpha One Awareness Month. Um, so from Love Air, we would love to know uh, how you're feeling um, across the globe, Richard, uh, in the US, uh, Karen in Germany, and Aaron in Portugal. How are you dealing with uh, managing your disease, being isolated, carrying on with your dreams, um, and, and being alphas? And we'd love to hear your, your opinion. So over to you, Richard. Well, you know, I find the two people I'm sharing this panel with today uh, truly inspiring and just as people in general, but of course as alphas. I know, I mean, you guys are aware we lost an alpha yesterday in the States, Joanne. And like my two panelists here today, um, she was an, a very inspirational person, a person who did everything, who was everywhere. If she wasn't, you know, kayaking somewhere, she was taking her motor home and seeing alphas halfway across the country, always laughing, always smiling. But there's the conundrum, right? It's almost as though um, many of the features that we admire and that we aspire to as alphas are now somewhat dangerous. So I want to kind of throw it to our two athletes and hear how Alpha One, I mean, most people just, they didn't go to work today. That's so different for Aaron and Karen. You know, they don't just go to work. They're with people. They, uh, they're big crowds of people. They're inspiring other people. So obviously that, that's all gone now for a moment. So um, Aaron, are you out on the waves by yourself, keeping a good distance? I think six feet is sensible, by the way, if you're surfing, <laughs> whether or not you have coronavirus or not in the atmosphere, but that's another story. And Karen, uh, how are you both dealing with this as athletes? Well, uh, here in Portugal has been a, a slow process in terms of quarantine and being able to do the activities you want to do and uh, they've uh, decided to close the beaches so I oh. see many people going for alternative sports like running and, and cycling right. and just even walking so uh, in a way I think they're they're doing good trying to keep a healthy lifestyle but still it's important for um, athletes to go to their water and uh, really the ocean I think is like uh, a medicine for many of surfers and many other people and yeah it's been it's been really hard but we've been uh, keeping keeping active at home and trying to share this message and I think Karen has been doing some trainings at home and yeah, we try to motivate from from our homes and spread the message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's really a different story now. Um, I came home from Washington D.C. March first um, to a Germany that was quite different. So I haven't seen the inside of the CrossFit box um, in six weeks now, mm. on, on my fourth week of total isolation. And thankfully, I have a gym at home um, where we can do uh, everything that you can do in a commercial gym. So thankfully, I, I have my space, my weights, my everything I need. But also we can only go out um, in Paris. So no more than two people are allowed to be outside together. So we go for walks every day to get a bit of sunshine, to get the dogs walked and to keep our sanity. Uh, and of course being, um, in this situation where we can't go grocery shopping, for instance, we live uh, a much simpler life than we used to. 
and it has turned us into eating even more healthy than we did before. <laughs> there are some good things about this as well. Um, but as far as training goes, it's really hard to find that drive and motivation when you're totally alone. Thankfully, I have my husband that is training with me. So we, we have a, a good uh, workout environment at the moment. That's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. So Aaron, you actually can't, the beaches are closed. Wow, that's, that's uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, guess that's, I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? Because people will congregate, right? Yeah, we, we haven't been able to, to continue even with the competitions that we had uh, ahead. So all, all oh, events had been canceled. And um, yeah, it was hard to like get to a position where uh, you felt good and you felt ready. And suddenly we have this, um, this virus and many people getting affected. And definitely as alphas, how it it was very like, wow, like we have to be careful. And um, yeah, I've been trying to do as much as I can at home and trying to uh, also practice meditation and different mm. kinds of breathing, which I want to share on the, on the page as well on Happy Air that would be good to, for alphas to try and other people to continue breathing and, and getting, getting to a, a calm mental space. I think it's the most important now that, that we are kind of locked, locked in our houses. Um, yeah. And what I was going to say was, do you have any issues with the medication or with the infusion or... Mm. <laughs> How is that impacting? Because I, I, I did read that um, in some countries they're suspending because, of course, you can't go to the hospitals or the clinicians now, the countries where you have to do that. I, I think you self-infuse, fortunately, don't you, Karen, in Germany? And uh, Richard? Yes, I do. Um, I, at the moment, I will self-infuse this week um, and then go into the clinic for some testing next week and then get another batch of um, my therapy. And, uh, you know, the, the consequences, of course, in the long run, um, as this pandemic plays out, will be that we will have medicine shortages all, over, all across the board. Um, and already I have some of my inhalers that are undeliverable in Germany. Right meaning that I will actually have to go to the clinic in order to get a different one that might be available. Uh, so, of course, the, the situation is truly <coughs> really bad because you also have um, blood donations that we rely on in order to have our therapy right. has also gone down. So you have less plasma and less blood available. Um, hopefully, uh, there is a stock somewhere, uh, and hopefully, people continue to to donate plasma and blood even in this situation. Um, but as far as we know, in Germany, those numbers have gone down, of course, because people are scared, and it is a scary, scary situation for an alpha. Um, so I feel. I feel the terror of what if supply runs out? What if I'm left without medicine, without the infusion therapy? So yeah, that, that has been on my mind, <laughs> honestly, uh, because it, it is a situation that might rise. How about you in Portugal, Aaron? What are your concerns with materials or medication? Well, I don't take uh, any medication towards uh, alpha one, but I am uh, for the epilepsy. And uh, 
I think now now that um, it has reached a peak in Spain and Portugal, they're slowly like maintaining a stable mm. uh, percentage towards the next the next month. So uh, it looks like we could have a decrease in a uh, in um, cases with uh, people with the virus and positive, testing positive. But we still have to maintain uh, with precaution, definitely if we are, if we have already predisposition and maybe have, are affected by liver or respiratory diseases. And in this case, um, I think we, we should definitely help ourselves and help others and um it could it could be very very difficult for us if if it gets uh any more any more hard for us to to continue in this in this kind of situation because you know, karen brought up the point of the um plasma donations and it's interesting, maybe it's almost strange, it's counterintuitive, but some of the publicity in the United States has actually driven, because folks are out of work, it's actually in some areas, there are more people donating plasma than before. So the publicity is actually really, really good that we should get it out there. It sounds like it's negative and it should scare people, but it's actually really excellent. Um, and again, not to stir up any fear, but we also have even down to tubing or the masks that our nurses wear or gloves, there are many, many ways that an alpha can be impacted. A nurse comes to my home each week. That's, less, that's a less expensive option for the insurance companies actually in my area. And I've always preferred it because I think of hospitals as a places to get sick, you know, just yeah. for an alpha, it's best to avoid hospitals as much as possible. So I do have a wonderful nurse come every week and she's come for years and we're family friends now and uh, you know, with baby gifts and she's just a wonderful new mom. And uh, she has not been able to come here for two weeks, which happened in a finger snap uh, two weeks ago where she called me and said, hope you're doing well. I need to check and make sure you don't have any symptoms. Uh, great, no, I don't. And uh, a moment later I get an email saying, uh, or a text saying that she was not going to be able to come. So it's pretty obvious that she herself didn't get sick, but that she had probably been exposed to someone. So she is now um, not available to me. Another person is coming who's been super careful. He's terrific. I worry about him a great deal. He does seem like a smart guy. And we, we both wear masks uh, when he's at the house and gloves. And we perform the infusion on a stainless steel table. And as soon as he leaves, everything sprayed down. Everything that he touched even with gloves on, I clean with alcohol. So I'm being super careful and uh, he is as well. And again, we worry about our healthcare workers, but there are many, many, many ways that an alpha might be negatively impacted. Probably the most frightening to me, and it hasn't happened and I don't know, hopefully won't happen, is if somewhere, somehow someone thinks that our infusion medication might be helpful in fighting coronavirus or its symptoms. That's the most dangerous thing when your drug becomes attractive to a large number of people because we can barely support the folks that need it now. We certainly can't have people using it as a vacation drug or a, a maybe drug or prophylaxis because they're wealthy enough to buy it from someone. So hopefully, uh, so by the way, everybody remember that our medications are really great for alphas, but really bad for you. So it's the best <laughs> in the world. So Karen, have you had any um, events canceled? I know I've had speaking engagements canceled, quite a few going out locally. I had a few film festivals that I was going to speak at. And, and obviously, uh, there, there's no festing going on right now. No, no groups. How about you? Oh, all my speaking engagements up until... June, end of June, has been cancelled. Yeah. Um, all my other travels, my training camp in Iceland, of course, competitions. Wow. So it's, it's really, 
it's a great impact. So now we are working on um, digital com context so that we could digitally uh, make events that that alphas could participate in and other and of course also other um, groups of patients with respiratory diseases um, is we, we know that this situation we're nowhere close to the top right. we're not at the tilting point until you know months yet um, and that is probably the most scary thing that we're being locked down for quite some time. And even in Italy and Spain, they're not, uh, they're not even at the top yet. And, and, and so it's a long, long span um, that we're looking at. So I, I think we need to think new and think digital and think how can we get our message across in these times and for alphas that's deadly serious that we get out there and educate and talk about the importance of shielding one's own health but also those surrounding us i wonder if physicians uh i think now we're speaking to an international crowd here but i do wonder if physicians are being encouraged to test for alpha one when new patients are coming in with their first respiratory illness, whether or not related to the, you know, suspiciously, but uh, whether or not related to coronavirus. I wonder if people are testing. Uh, this, I, I don't think, think this, the yeah. system cannot cope with the, yeah. the severity of the number of people. Yeah. Um, um, and when they rapidly decline, it is a rapid decline. So I think that's out of the question. I mean, my hope is that um, we already know that certain laboratories have advanced with testing kits, which in fact, um, one of them is, is, is going to participate with the FDA for a testing kit for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is that the digital and the technology now really begins to kick off on a massive scale so that we will have those testing kits and then we will have by good logistical organizations they won't all necessarily be healthcare organizations they may be well organized patient organizations kits can be sent out much more readily to people just by uh, by the big couriers by the big message uh, the big messaging uh, companies and people can get kits and they will home test so people must gain it they really must gain ground in being digitally enabled now yeah. so that they can do their online tests, whether it be a spirometry or whether it be a peak flow or whether it's a diagnostic or whether it's their healthcare management online and connecting up to their coach. All these things, we have to change our mindset completely and, and let this become more of our lives and not less, you know, like the 80% instead of the 20%, it's inversely proportional to what we had before. But you know, human beings adapt very yeah. quickly. Yeah. You think now it's been a few weeks, but look how your life has adapted. I don't know what you think about that. Well, you know, I'm going to throw this to our friends. Here's where I think alphas have an advantage, okay? Uh, Again, it's a bit counterintuitive, but we're not we're we're not used to or used to we're not used to being well, right? You know, we're used to being ill <coughs> from time to time. We're used to being quarantined from people uh, from time to time. We're very very used to being extraordinarily careful about hygiene and uh, being with others in physical spaces. We're also used to being alone, you know, sick in bed or in hospital. Uh, and dealing with it and coping with it and getting back to life as quickly as possible afterwards. And not only that, but having an enriching life while we're in seclusion. So in an in, in odd way, I think that people that are chronically ill have an advantage at times like this. And is that a, a loony thought or what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I agree with that. I was actually going to mention it, that it feels like we have already 
being ready for, to go through this and be prepared to go through this in a positive way as so un, unlike many other people that don't have anything and they've lived their life normally with no illnesses and i think we we have the power to to show that that we are strong and that you can go through this with with the help of many people and and definitely as alphas it will be very impacting in in the world for sure how about you karen uh, i i think so too because the, as the disease is progressing as well we adapt and we move on and both in the respiratory community as a whole and also in the alpha one community we are very digital because this is the way uh, people with rare diseases are able to connect and communicate um, because we, we're pretty much alone in our little cities and states mm. and, and then we meet the, the digital world where we actually meet people like ourselves that live these strange lives that sometimes needs to be completely digital because we can't be around people. So I, I think we are at advantage because we're able to adapt to the loneliness. We're about making the new routine so that we have a daily kind of an, our own agenda for the day. And we're used to that. As we take our medication at a certain hour, we do our sleeping at a certain hour, we eat at certain intervals, and we're already there. And most people, they have this, this gliding scale through the day that they can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and they can um, maneuver in a different way. So I, I think this is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think so too. Um, the more you explore that uh, concept, Richard, the more clear it becomes. And, and also because we're in this time of behavior change for people, you know, it's a big wake up call for me. I think it's a big wake up call to society in, in so many ways but also putting your health first, really putting it first, and developing those mini routines which are so important to enable you to have any quality of life and um, any better health outcomes which you make happen for yourself. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to go through a daily process, a routine, and, and keep that going you know, with the highs and the lows that come in. Um, and now it's even more important than ever to make sure you don't have to go to the hospital, <laughs> to make sure that you keep here, sound mind, you know, and body, and the physical exercise, taking your medication appropriately, and all those little things that, that make such a difference in, in your own care plan. Yeah. I think... And we've talked about this before. We talked about this when we were together in Portugal. Um, it might be the most counterintuitive bit of it all is that when you're challenged and when you're living with the difficulties of having a chronic disease, uh, the very best thing you can do, certainly for your own mental health, is to take a deep breath and then reach out and help someone else in whatever way that you can. And it does... Uh, it sounds like so much uh, greeting card nonsense, but it, there's no better medicine than helping someone else. And believe me, someone out there, no matter how badly you feel, someone out there is feeling worse, at least for that moment. And it does lighten your load to help another person. And for that one moment, you're not, uh, and of course we have to be in, in a literal sense, kind of self-absorbed and take care of this and watch out for that. So it, it t it's a nice break to watch out for someone else for a moment. And in, in a, again, I think now we need to watch out for the greater part of humanity, the greater part of humanity that expect 
to be out in public every day, that expect to be perfectly well every day, that expect to be able to do anything they want, anytime they want. And it's for us to say, well, you know, it's not true, it's okay, and you're gonna get through this because we get through it every day. Yeah. Now, I, I firmly believe that as well, Richard, that the altruism that we, we bring to the world is also what changes it. And I do believe in the greater good of human being and humankind. And I hope that we all can learn from this situation, not only to take care of ourselves, but to take care of other people and make sure that other people are safe and taken care of. And I think we see that in all the, um, we have a neighbor that went out to buy us butter. We, we don't know this neighbor, mm. but this is a neighbor that knows our closest neighbor. Mm. And they went out to, go, to get us butter because we couldn't get it online. It, it was all sold out. These random acts of kindness. Uh, and I think you see a lot of them around. And I hope that at the end of this pandemic that human, the human race will say, well, let's continue this. <laughs> let's continue helping others. Let's continue to reach out those hands and grasp those that are falling because they, they need a helping hand to stand. So yeah, I, I firmly believe in that, Richard. Yeah, says the woman who pulls jets with her teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope also that mankind learns a big lesson from this and, and we continue on a good path. We all needed it. <laughs> we needed this in a way. And, uh, uh, but it's great to be, I would say like 90% of the relationships I have are really positive, strong approach to the situation in spite of great difficulty um not many people are in the negative situation about it um so i i feel positive that some good things will come from this aaron yeah i think towards the kind of agenda that you were talking about karen and what people are starting to to realize is that it is important to to follow a, a regime for yourself and uh, to take care of um, your your health and how you feel and uh, impacting also others other people around you. So I felt like many people have been kind of going into that regime and and taking uh, taking their day and perspective uh, in a different way, thinking about other people, thinking about themselves by running or doing exercises, and uh, I guess staying at home, thinking about other people. So yeah, I think for sure, if, uh, if we continue with this uh, kind of perspective and make other people want to do it and uh, believe in it as well, it will be amazing. 